Hey, it's Trybear. Hellivers 2, much like the first game, is a brutal world where you will die over and over again. And if you're just starting out in Helldivers 2, it may seem impossible to face down some of the hordes on the higher difficulties. But outside of unlocking new stratagems and improving your super destroyer upgrades, most of your success on the battlefield relates to your knowledge of the enemies you're facing and how to specifically counter each one. Even the massive elite Terminids and Automatons in Helldivers 2 have glaring weaknesses that you can exploit. So today we're going to go through every single enemy type in Helldivers 2 to explain what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are so that you can be aware of exactly how to counter them so you can come out victorious. There are two factions in Helldivers 2, the Automatons and the Terminids, and we're going to start with the Automatons because it seems like the faction that people have the most trouble with. We'll start at the smallest enemies and work our way up to the heavy and eventually the elite and talk about all of the enemies you'll encounter for the Automatons. Now the rules of engagement are different between the Terminids and the Automatons. When it comes to the bots, I recommend following your ABCs, and that is always be behind cover, which is a different strategy than you'll face with the Terminids, but there are so many bots in the Automaton army that can insta-gib you from distance. If a rocket devastator appears and blows you up in one shot, if an MJ raider gets behind you and blows you up with a, a full volley, you didn't notice the cannon turret in the outpost you were walking into, all of these things can lead to you dying instantly from a distance. And so when it comes to bots, always be behind cover, preferably crouching or prone if you can, if you have a good spot for it, and just try to break as many lines of sight as you can. And you can even use things like the barrier generator, which help a lot with mitigating spread damage that you get from all the laser shots coming your way. There are a good six or seven basic enemy types for the bots, and they are all look basically the same and have different effects and different weapons and different things to look out for. Your simple grunt for the bots is the Raider, which looks like this. They also come in a machine gun variant, which has a machine gun and typically has these X backpacks on them. Even more dangerous are the rocket Raiders that have a rocket launcher, and you can also face assault Raiders that have a jetpack that will jump and land in front of you. For all Raider types, they're generally quite fragile, even with just light armor penetration you can blow them up easily and like most bots they have a weak spot of their head if you blow their head off they'll crumble and you can even break off limbs if you want but they're so flimsy that most of the time all you have to do is get one or two good shots on their chest on their hips or on their head and they'll crumble before you the biggest problem with the raiders of all kinds is just the threat they pose to killing you from medium to long distance if you don't know that they're there. Even if you're a good distance away from, say, an MG raider, if a stray blast hits you, it can interrupt heals, it can disrupt reloads, it can cause your camera to recoil and look away from you, and cause a lot of disruption or even do serious damage, especially if it hits you in the head. Which brings me back to my original point of always be behind cover just in case a large group of raiders just landed in or got dropped in behind you and then you get overrun with the fire that's coming from a flank position. Of these, you want particular care to be taken when clearing out the rocket raiders as these will insta-gib you. Even in some situations where you have the highest armor in the game, you will still get blown up by these guys. And so if you don't have line of sight broken, you want to focus on these first. Make sure you pay attention to where they are and what they're doing. Next are are the Marauders and Brawlers. The Brawlers will have the two blades on them, and generally they're the easiest to deal with because they function kind of like bugs. They get in melee range and they'll try to overwhelm you, but you have plenty of time to deal with them. Sometimes they can get annoying if they get right behind you and there's a bunch of them, and beware, they do a lot of damage if they do get in melee range, but typically you'll have plenty of time to clear them out. Just like the normal Raiders, you'll be able to blow off their head, and beware that they will use their blades to block low-level gunfire so if you're using like a shotgun or anything with light or no penetration sometimes it'll take multiple shots and in this case you may want to aim for the knees or the elbows to avoid hitting their weapons as it will reduce the damage that they take. Next are the troopers and you will rarely see troopers walking around on the ground it's extremely difficult to find this I couldn't even find good footage of it and the reason being is that they are 
primarily pilots of other vehicles. You'll most commonly see them on the back of the Scout Striders, which is the two-legged walkers that start spawning on lower to medium difficulties. But sometimes when you destroy the walker or when you find other situations, you might encounter them walking around and they are incredibly squishy and easy to deal with. The Scout Striders are pretty scary at first when you first start running into them, and they can be quite annoying depending on your loadout and what weapons you're using. If you have a no penetration weapon or a light armor penetration, penetration weapon, your best bet is to aim at the trooper on the back of the Strider. The Scout Striders have two main attacks. They have a volley that they'll fire from their main weapons, and if you get into melee range, they will stomp at you, though this is quite slow, and they have a pretty slow turn radius as well. You can easily counter Scout Striders by getting elevation either above or below them to get an angle on shooting the trooper on the back of them, and if you're currently in the middle of low mob density, you can walk up to them, side strafe around them, and then get a quick angle on the trooper to blast him off of his perch. Generally, their volleys come in very discreet bursts, like bop, bop, bop. So once that's done, wait for the volley to finish, run past them in a wide berth so you don't get stomped on, aim for the trooper on top and knock them down. Now, that being said, if there's a lot of scout striders coming your way or it's more dangerous for you to run up and get into melee range with them, you're gonna have to deal with them just like you would a normal vehicle. And that is if you have heavy penetration or explosives, you can just shoot them directly and they'll blow up usually in one hit, or if you have medium armor penetration, like say with a machine gun, you can easily aim at the hip joints to deal a ton of damage to them and knock them down, and once the hip is broken and they fall, the trooper on top and the strider both will die pretty easily. Next are the berserkers, and just like the brawlers, they're less of a threat as long as you're in good position and you're aware of where they are. These are higher armor, higher HP value bots that will charge at you with two chainsaws on their hands, and if they get close to you, they can very easily two or three shot you with fast swinging chainsaw attacks. Their two main weak points are their head, which you can blow off, or their core, which is their abdomen. You can blast into this. I believe you actually do slightly more damage to the abdomen if you want to focus on that. And as long as you're burning ammo into them, they'll go down quite quickly. Or if you really need to, you can blow off their arms. And when they have no arms or limbs, no chainsaws, they won't pose any threat to you and you can deal with them as you would, but they don't have too much HP. So I recommend just blowing them in the stomach and getting them down quickly. And that covers the low to medium difficulty bots you'll face from the Automaton faction in Helldivers 2. Everything from here on can pose a major threat, and if they're in their moment of strength and they get a good angle on you, they can very easily wipe your entire party or kill you instantly if you're not paying attention. Starting with the Devastators, which there are three variants of. These are basically the size of the Berserkers, but they actually have medium armor, which means that you have to deal with them quite differently than you would a Berserker. The normal Devastator just has a basic assault rifle on their arm, and you can deal with them by shooting their weak point, which is their head. If you can blow their head off, they'll catch on fire and die quite easily. If you have a pretty high damage weapon, you can kill them in one or two shots directly to the head. But of course, if you're under fire from multiple directions or you don't have a clean shot, it can be a challenge to deal with the basic Devastator. So just aim for that little head they have there, blow it off, and you can kill them quickly. The heavy Devastator variant has a riot shield in front of them and a strong machine gun with high rate of fire. Directly against the heavy Devastator, it can be quite annoying to deal with as you do have to dodge their shots, and it's a little harder to hit their head because most shots, especially coming from their left side, will run into the riot shield and get blocked, which means that you'll have a harder time hitting that weak point. Now keep in mind that all automatons, except for the major vehicles, can be disrupted with suppressive fire, which means the more shots they take from you and your teammates or your sentries, the more inaccurate they will become. And this helps a lot, especially with the heavy devastator. As you start pelting them with shots, it makes their machine gun a little less effective in forcing you to run away or hide behind cover. And I found that if you can actually get good fire on them and hit them in the head at least once, you can usually go toe to toe with them at medium distance and kill them before they kill you or do any significant amount of damage as long as you're being aggressive enough. And just like the scout striders, if you have heavy penetration or good ar medium armor penetration, you can hit them in the joints or in the side or in the backpack and deal extra damage there and take them down that. The third and final version of the Devastator is the Rocket Devastator, and these guys are absolutely 
terrifying. They have this huge salvo of rockets on their back, and they have a general, they're basically a normal devastator with an added support weapon on top. So they walk and talk like a normal devastator, but when they lock on target, they'll fire a salvo of like five or six rockets, and each one of these rockets is capable of insta-giving you in one shot if it lands. So just like the MG Raiders, you want to make sure that you're behind cover as soon as you spot one of these, and generally what I like to do when I see a rocket devastator is I will hide behind cover, wait for them to fire their rocket salvo, and then come out to shoot them. Because their rockets are far more accurate and more dangerous than the rockets that you see from the rocket raiders, and they will catch you off guard if you're not ready to hell dive in the opposite direction. The good news is you can blow the rockets off their back if you deal enough damage to it. I recommend doing this right away. As soon as you see them, if you get the jump on them, blow the rockets off their back immediately so that they turn into a normal devastator at that point, and then you can go and deal with them. Or if you see them and they see you, hide behind cover, wait for them to fire their insane salvo of rockets, and then deal with them directly before they can fire the next salvo. Next is the special enemy in the Automaton Empire, the Commissars. And these actually look quite similar to the Raiders, Brawlers, and Marauders, the smaller units that they have in their army, with one major difference. They have both a one-handed pistol and a blade, and they have a little bit of more white armor on them. So they're almost like an officer unit in the bot army. They are generally smarter and faster than most of the other small raiders, and will often throw grenades at you with chilling accuracy that can force you out of cover or throw you up on top of areas where you might have the high ground they can catch you with a grenade if you're not careful. They are also the most likely out of all the bots in the automaton army to summon a bot drop. You'll often see them aim a flare gun up into the air. When they fire the flare it will call a bot drop to your location and once the flare has been fired you can't stop it. The bot drop ship will be coming shortly. But if you see them aiming their hand up in the air and you kill them before the flare goes off you can prevent the bot drop from happening. But just like the Terminids, they are not the only bots in the army that will summon the bot drop. They are just the most likely to do it. So when you see a Commissar, you generally want to kill them quickly, though they are slightly less priority than a Rocket Devastator or a Rocket Raider, for example. Speaking of the drop ships, these are interactable objects. They can be damaged and they can be destroyed as well. So when you see a bot drop coming in, this is the primary way that bots will appear in the world when you're on an automaton planet. A couple railgun shots, some recoilless rifle shots, some explosive shots, or general major damage to the drop ship will explode the ship, and if you can do it before it drops the bots, it will actually kill all the bots on board as well, which means you can counter and deal with the drop ships directly if you're fast enough. Also keep in mind that no matter what payload it's dropping, the bots are vulnerable to attack as soon as they appear underneath the drop ship and start falling, and most of them won't actually acquire targets until they hit the ground and start pathing, which means that you have the chance to attack anything that's falling down as soon as they appear and right before they drop you can shoot a rocket up and deal damage to a bunch of raiders that are inside of the bot drop or start working on the vehicles that might be coming down the cannon turret is an em emplacement that you'll find in outposts and i actually don't see many people talking about this one um, most of the time because you just try to use an orbital strike or an eagle drop to destroy it but these are actually real enemies they will turn and target you they have a strength they have a weakness and they have a weak point as as well. You'll recognize them as tall towers inside of large encampments or medium encampments of the automatons, and you definitely do not want this aiming at you for any reason, as it will insta-give anyone it hits and has a large radius of explosion. So if you recognize a cannon turret inside an outpost, make sure that you focus it down and destroy it to make sure that you don't get blasted away automatically. Now obviously since the cannon turret is so large, you can actually just use that to blast it with a 500 kg Eagle Blast or an Airstrike or an Orbital Bombardment, something to destroy it there, but you can also destroy it directly. Like most of the elite and armored vehicles in the Automaton Empire, they have a glowing weak point of the exhaust vents behind the tower. So wherever the muzzle is facing on the opposite side of the tower will be these glowing orange exhaust vents, which will close periodically when it's acquiring a new target, but if the cannon turret is actually inactive or doesn't have a target, you can get behind it, hit it with 
a rocket or a railgun or some kind of explosive and blow it up with just normal weapons without having to utilize any of your stratagems. And lastly, we have the two big bads of the automatons, the elite enemies in their kit. The first of which is the Hulk, and the Hulk, like the Devastators, comes in three different variations. And each variation will change the type of weapon that they're carrying when they're facing you. The Hulk Bruiser is the most common variant, and you'll find this as the first version you encounter as you start moving up through difficulty 4, 5, and 6. They are heavily armored from the front, have insane damage output and offense, and they can easily one or two shot any Helldiver regardless of the loadout they're using. So as with every elite enemy in Helldivers 2, as soon as you see Hulks, your entire squad needs to focus up and deal with them directly and make sure that you do not have line of sight for them for long as they will blast you into dust. Unfortunately, if you have a medium and low armor penetration, you're not going to be able to do much to them from the front. They are heavily armored from the front. They do have a head that you can deal with and you can you can blow off their arms, though it usually takes a strong medium armor penetration weapon or a heavy armor penetration weapon in order to do so. So the easiest way to deal with hulks in general is to use your stratagems if you're caught from the front. But if you do have high or heavy armor penetration, you can deal damage directly directly to their head or to their arms to blow them off and make them less offensive. However, if your squad is spread out, they do have a major weak point just like the cannon turrets with their exhaust vents on their back. So if you can get a good flank on them, someone distracts the Hulk from the front and you can get behind them, you can shoot directly into the vents and blow them up this way. The Bruiser and the Obliterator have either a melee weapon and a ranged weapon or two ranged weapons and can be treated essentially the same in how you engage with them. And with this, I would generally get good strong cover make sure they don't have an easy path towards you try to get them caught behind something and then use either stratagems or heavy armor penetration with recoilless rifle or the anti-tank or a rail gun in order to deal with them or drop stratagems on their head to blow them up the third variation however is the hulk scorcher and they are equipped with two long range flamethrowers and they are also high movement speed and will hunt you down and generally with the Hulk Scorcher, because they're such high movement speed and closer to medium to short range, I generally treat them more like a Terminid than I do a bot, and then I like to kite them away and stay on the move to keep them away from me and deal as much damage as I can either to the exhaust vents on their back or just blow them up directly. And again, if you have expendable anti-tank or recoilless rifle, which you can get very early on in the game, you'll be able to deal with them from the front with two or three shots or one or two shots if you can hit them directly in the vent. Lastly is the final variant, the Annihilator Tank. And the Annihilator Tank has two different variants that that I've seen in all the missions that I've done. And the first time you encounter Annihilator Tank, all will seem hopeless because they are insanely armored, they have incredible firepower, and they are a menace on the field. But there's a couple ways to deal with them. Firstly, if you get the normal Annihilator Tank, which has a forward front cannon and a big blast cannon, it looks almost like a cannon turret on tracks, driving around on the ground. You can very easily utilize their slow turn radius, get close to them, walk around them, and get behind them because their main close range weapon only comes from the front and is pretty slow firing if you can get around them and move, especially if you're using medium or light armor like a scout pack. Not only that, but their main weapon turns quite slowly, and as long as you're moving around them, you can very easily deal good damage to them, including using grenades. And just like all the major vehicles for the automatons, they have the exhaust fence behind them that you can use to do, do massive damage to them and destroy them quite quickly. That being said, if you ever face an annihilator tank from medium to long range, you're in a lot of trouble, because if you can't side strafe them or use their turn radius against them, they will deal insane damage, and at this point, you're pretty much stuck with just using stratagems to blow them up from a distance. Additionally, the second variant or the first variant of the Annihilator tank, which has a faster moving turret and focuses on more crowd control, looks more like a World War II Sherman tank, a lot smaller, and has that fixed weapon on top. These you can't really side strafe easily or even at all, and generally you'll just want to either spread out and try to get an angle on the vent, or again, just use stratagems. Now luckily their aggro range seems to be a little bit shorter than most 
most of the bots in the Automaton army, so you can use this to your advantage. Get far away, throw down an Orbital Bombardment or a 500 KG, or even just some Eagle Airstrike should be enough to help blow it up. So just keep hammering it until it blows. Keep in mind that all bots in the Automaton army are vulnerable to explosives. Even the starter grenade, the impact grenade that you get at level one with a fresh account, no upgrades, is able to deal with these bots. So if you're running especially an engineering armor set where you can have up to six grenades, if you face against a Hulk or any of the Annihilator tanks, you can just get on top of them and dump multiple grenades into them, especially underneath them or near their exhaust vents, and you can blow them up pretty quickly. And I will give a special mention to the artillery fire from the automatons on some of the planets and some of the missions you will find artillery encampments that will fire at you from a distance. These fire at where you are currently standing. So as long as you stay on the move, you will never get hit by the artillery fire. You just need to find where that structure is located and destroy it so it stops shooting at you from a distance. But this is unique to the automatons. And that concludes all the different enemy types for the automatons. Always be behind cover. Generally aim for the exhaust vents, the head or the limbs, and explosives are your best friend. Next, let's move on to the terminates. And most of these are pretty straightforward to deal with. The bigger ones are actually pretty dangerous and the rules of engagement are quite different when it comes to terminates versus automatons. Where with the automatons, my general tip was to always be behind cover. When it comes to terminates, it's always be on the move. Never stop moving when you're dealing with terminates because they have lots of ways to get behind you, to flank you, to surround you, and they have certain enemies that have slowing effects or stunning effects that if you get caught by this, you will be surrounded and killed. And so generally distance is your best friends with most of the Termitids. And especially when you come to the spewers and spitters, as long as you're far enough away, you can avoid a lot of the range damage that they deal. So just always be on the move. Never stand still when you're facing swarms of Terminids. Let's start at the bottom like we did before and work our way up to the more dangerous bugs that you'll face. Scavengers are the lowest form of Termitid and they are incredibly squishy. Their claim to fame is that there's just so many of them and you often neglect them when you're focusing on the bigger bugs that you're encountering and they actually do significant damage. If you're wearing medium or light armor in Helldivers 2, it'll take maybe two swings of them to deal damage to you and they can also break legs when they swing or arms, which can be a huge problem if you're trying to stay on the move. The guard rovers are excellent with dealing with termitids because it'll help clear out the lower level terminids that have lower HP and you can also use your secondary weapons to blast the scavengers away or just use explosives to deal with them in mass. The bile spitters are the small version of the ranged terminids and they're more annoying than anything else. Again, they're quite squishy just like the scavengers, very easy to deal with, but they do have a slowing effect if their projectile hits you and in many cases the projectile is seeking which means it's hard to avoid. So you do want to try and prioritize these if you see them, just blow them up with a single shot or just use your secondary weapon fire to keep them out of your way. Next are the warriors and these are very susceptible to limb fire. All of their limbs can be blown off. You can blow off their front two legs, their back two legs, or even their head. Though unlike the bots, when it comes to the warriors and the bigger version of the warrior, the brood commanders, I recommend not going for the head because it won't give you as much value as you would get if you went for the limbs. The reason being is both the warrior and the brood commanders, if you you blow their head off, you can actually deal lethal damage to them, and even without their head, they will continually attacking you for another three to five seconds, and that can do a ton of damage to you, and it's just not worth the extra value. Whereas if you blow off a limb, you can take away their offensive capabilities, and you can slow them down significantly, and usually by the time you blow off two limbs for the warriors, or three limbs for the brood commanders, they're already dead, and they're slowed in the process. But all weapon fire works great on the warriors, light armor penetration, and up, just aim for the legs. I usually blow off the front two legs, and once that happens, they're usually down and you're good to go. They're also not as fast as some of the other terminids you'll face, and I generally will deprioritize them or try to get them with cleave damage. So like collateral damage from explosives or orbitals or any stratagem from above that helps take them down because you can kite them quite easily. They don't speed up, they go at a pretty steady pace. 
However, the Brood Commanders are a little bit different. They're the souped-up ant version of the Warrior. I like to call them the Queen because they remind me of the Zerg Queen. But not only do they have the same kind of features as the Warriors, they're very aggressive, they'll chase you down, they're significantly faster than the Warriors, and they also have a charge attack, which they'll wind up and lunge towards you, which can actually cause a shell shock effect and knock you down if you get caught by it, though it has a pretty weak turn radius, which means you can sidestep it if it's coming towards you. If you see Brood Commanders, the first thing you'll want to do is blow off one or both of their front legs. They're not heavily armored. You can do this even with light armor penetration weapons and just blow them down that way. Again, if you blow their head off, you will deal lethal damage to them, but they will continue fighting for several seconds. And if they're up close, they can actually do lethal damage to you even after they're dead. So the best way to deal with the Brood Commanders that I found is I blow off the front two legs and then very easily blow off a back leg. And once you do three limbs, that usually is enough to KO them and they'll fall down to the ground and you don't have to worry about them charging you at all. Next are the Hive Guards, and these are a little more annoying to deal with. It's kind of like the Scout Strider of the Terminid Army. They have heavily armored legs on the front and a headplate as well. So firing medium armor penetration or light armor penetration from the front can be a bit of a problem because it's, it'll just ricochet right off. And also if you have a sharp angle on them, it'll ricochet anyways, even if you have strong armor penetration as well. However, they do have a weak point in the rest of their body, so if you can get a flank on them or higher low elevation on them, you can shoot underneath their legs from the front or from the sides or shoot them in the butt. When they're walking towards you, you can easily hit their butt, which is flying up in the air. It kind of points up, especially when they put their, their shield up and they hunker down to stop being shot at. And if you have a high precision weapon, you can even shoot them underneath their arms in the front to destroy them that way. It's also just as easy to roll a grenade underneath them and get under their body with it, which will do a ton of damage to them because it gets behind their main defense. Hive guards become a big nuisance if they're in big groups because they can protect front fire for any of the bugs behind them, and they're also the most likely to summon a bug breach. Just like the commissars and really any of the raiders or the marauders in the automaton army which can shoot a flare up into the air to summon a bot drop, most of the medium to small bugs in the terminate army can start shooting pheromones up. You'll see them rear up and roar, and this yellow pheromone mist will come off of them. While they're doing this, if you let them do it for a few seconds, it will summon a bug breach and a bunch of bugs will come out from underground. And in my experience, the most common ones that do this are the hive guards. They do this more than any other type, though I've seen even the small bugs or the medium bugs or the warriors. I've seen almost all of the bugs do this at different points, but the most common seems to be the hive guards. So taking them out quickly or just paying attention to when they're doing the pheromone call, you can just take them out before that happens and limit the amount of ads that come your way. And from here on out on the bug list, things start to get really hairy as these are insanely dangerous bugs that you need to know exactly how to deal with them or they will wipe you and your party. First up is the Pouncers and the Hunters. Two different variants of a strong, fast bug that will flank you and deal a ton of damage. The way you can tell them apart is the Pouncers have these yellow webbings in between their limbs, and they're a little bit smaller than the Hunters. So you won't see them come at you as quickly, but they do jump really far. And when you see that yellow webbing, you know it's a Pouncer, and you just want to be aware of them because they can clear a lot of distance, and they will get behind you or up on top of elevation areas quite easily, so you want to shoot them down. But far more dangerous than the Pouncers are the Hunters. They're going to be slightly bigger than the Pouncers, and the webbing between their limbs is going to be orange instead of yellow. And generally, when you see a giant horde of Terminids coming towards you, I like to make sure I take out the Stalkers and the Hunters first, because if, for whatever reason, a Hunter or a Stalker gets up close to you, it usually will result in a death because not only do they do insane damage, they have insane tracking, they can keep up with you, but they also have a slowing effect on their attacks, which means that once they CC you, you will usually get swarmed by all the other Terminids and perish. So anytime you're looking into a horde of Terminids, look for that orange webbing and focus down the Hunters immediately. And if the Pouncers are the Squirtle and the Hunters are the War Turtle, then the Stalkers are the Blastoise. These are the fully grown up version of this type of bug and they are 100% your main priority if you see them. They can cloak in plain sight, which means that if you're not paying attention, you can miss them as they'll be completely, you know, shimmery, invisible with that stealth effect. They do reduce 
ridiculous damage when they get up close, and they have a knockback stun effect that knocks you down when you land as well, and they can basically one or two shot you if they get close. And not only are they heavily cloaked, which means they will get close that way, but they're also insanely fast and insanely aggressive. You'll notice them by the shimmering cloak effect when they're invisible, but when they're visible, they look just like a giant version of the hunter. They have white skin and more of a red webbing between their limbs, and if you see any stalkers, you want to focus them down as fast as possible. Everyone on your team needs to make sure that stalkers are not alive if they're in the vicinity because they will pose a serious threat to you and your entire squad. And they also have an added trick in that unlike all the other bugs in the Terminid army, they have a special spawn. So if you see a stalker for any reason, these don't spawn randomly in normal breaches or in normal areas. They spawn only from uniquely spawned nests, stalker nests that will appear on the map, and they will continually spawn stalkers until you follow them to their nest and destroy the nest. So if you ever see a stalker for any reason, a cloaked enemy that's coming towards you, the first thing you think is, okay, we need to go find that nest and destroy it, or they will continually chase us down and they will hunt you across the entire map. So when you see a stalker, take note of the direction they're coming from, head in that direction, look for the next stalker, and follow them all the way to their nest and blow it up, and you will stop them from spawning until the next stalker nest appears. Like most bugs, you can deal damage to their limbs or their abdomen. They don't really have any major armor. They don't have a large amount of health. It's got a medium amount of health. The biggest threat they pose is if you don't see them coming and they get close, their offense is the biggest problem when it comes to stalkers. Next is the spewers, and these are the big, huge versions of of the spitters, and there's two different types to worry about. The nursing spewers are the orange variant of the large spewers, and they usually show up on the desert type maps, and they can be a huge problem when they bundle up because they have insane damage output from a medium range, which means if you're standing still and a volley hits you from the side, you will die to the acid very quickly. So like most terminids, you want to stay on the move, stay out of their firing range, and deal enough damage to them to kill them before they get in firing range of you. If you're caught out in the open, you can utilize the hell dive to either the left or right lateral direction as it's a little bit slow on their spew so you can use this to your advantage and their best weak point is actually their head unlike most of the terminids you want to blow their head off and once their head is gone they will fall to the ground now if you want to you can actually blow up the their back like the whole like their abdomen their glowing abdomen it won't take as much damage as their head will as far as just damage output but you can blow it up which will cause some minor damage to surrounding terminids and of course if you're behind them and you can't reach their head it is your next best option also keep in mind with both of the spewers, the friendly fire exists on the enemy side as well, so you can use the spray that they're using to deal damage to the smaller terminids that might be swarming you. The other variant of the spewer is the bile spewer, which is the green variant of the spewers. They look quite similar, they're just green instead of yellow. They have the same weak point of the head being very vulnerable to attacks, and the back being slightly less vulnerable, but still a useful option if you're from behind. The biggest difference here is their volley is a lot longer, both in duration and reach. Each. And so generally you want to keep a wider berth from the bile spewers than you normally do for the nursing spitters and just make sure that they don't get in firing range of you. Lastly are the two elite enemies or the heavy, the final heavy and the only elite enemy for the Termined Army. And these are the hardest to deal with in general, especially if you don't know how to deal with them. First is the charger and is probably the most, the biggest wall that people run into when they're trying to do the higher difficulties for Terminate. And they're surprisingly easy to deal with as long as you know what their strengths and weaknesses are. The Charger has heavy armor on the front, sides, and top of their body. If you're using medium and low armor penetration weapons, you won't be able to really be able to do anything, anything to them or any damage to them at all from the front or the sides. They do have a fleshy spot on their back, which is their, uh, their butt. It doesn't really do bonus weak point damage, but it is vulnerable to even light armor penetration weapons. And what's great about destroying their butt is that when you blow it up, it stops them from being able to use their special ability, the charge, which makes them a lot easier to deal with. So if you're stuck, caught out 1v1 against a charger, you don't have any heavy armor or explosives that can deal with them, you can just use the, the butt as your main target, blow it up, stop their charging, and then circle strafe around them to deal damage to them. Close in melee range, they will rear up and do a big slam on top of you, which does a bunch of damage, and their biggest threat is going to be their charge attack. They'll rear up, slowly land down, and then start barreling towards you. 
This has a slightly reduced turn radius, so you can sidestep it, but keep in mind that they, they have increased turn radius if they run into collision. So if they run into a wall that doesn't stop them immediately, they can actually 180 turn on you and knock you down. Or if they knock you back, they can hit you multiple times with the same charge, which will kill you very easily. However, the weak point for the charger is not actually their butt. It's their exposed flesh underneath their armored sections. So if for any reason, either with a recoilless rifle, an expendable anti-tank, uh, if you have a, a stratagem that slightly misses and blows off their armor, or if you have a rail gun and you blow off their armor, it will expose this yellow fleshy under skin underneath their armor. And this is the true weak point of any charger. In fact, if you're able to blow off an armor piece and shoot directly, even with light armor penetration weapons into this fleshy underskin, you can actually kill them in just a small number of shots. So when it comes to chargers, use a rail gun, or if you're early game, you can use a recoilless rifle or an expendable anti-tank, blow off one of their front legs, and then just switch to your normal weapon and spray and pray right into that exposed skin underneath, and you'll take them out very quickly. But of course, as with all elites and heavies in this game, you can also use stratagems to blow them up, hit them directly with an orbital bombardment or a laser or a rail cannon or any of the airstrikes, either from the Eagle or from the Super Destroyer in the sky. But honestly, once you get used to side strafing them and walking in circles, they can be less of a problem than you might think. And if you have any kind of heavy armor penetration with you and you blow off their leg, you can kill them so quickly that they become less of a problem. It's really a problem when they all come together as a group of swarmed enemies that they really show their strength. Also keep in mind that they will destroy buildings and obstacles. If you hit if you run them into something that's sturdy enough though, they will get stunned and stop their charge. So you can use rocks or heavy encampment buildings to stop them from moving. Last is the big bad of the Terminated Army, the Bile Titans. And these things are a combination of all the strengths of every single one of the Terminates. They have insane armor all over their body. They are incredibly large. They do insane melee damage. So if you get close to them and they stomp on you, they will usually one-shot you, even if it's a glancing blow or two shot you at the very least and if you get within medium range of you they have a huge bile spew just like the bile spewers that will do incredible damage to you and slow you if you're kind of generally in the area of the spray. So put all that together and you're in a lot of trouble when you run into a Bile Titan, especially when there's multiple Bile Titans. Now you used to be able to shoot them directly in the head with a rail gun, uh, one or two or even three shots sometimes would take them down, but they got buffed recently where they are a lot more durable in that front. You generally wanna lean on stratagems with the Bile Titans, but if you have to, you can use your heavy armor penetration, recoilless rifle, expendable anti-tank, rail cannon to shoot them in the abdomen or in the head, or you can even blow off the armor on some of their limbs as as well. When it comes to Bile Titans, you generally just want to keep a long distance between you and them. If you're in me medium to short range, they will spew on you and kill you very quickly, as well as slow you, with, which if the spray doesn't kill you directly, the slow might get you killed by the other Terminids that are swarming around you. And of course, they can also just stomp on top of you and kill you that way. The continuous ship beam from the Super Destroyer is incredibly useful here, as you'll do a bunch of very targeted damage. The Rail Cannon is also useful. If there's a Bile Titan, it'll usually hit them directly or if you can use it right you can use any of the eagle strikes or the orbital bombardments to hit them directly in the body to destroy them that way also keep in mind that all enemies in the game will take damage from drop pods so if you are reinforcing and aiming your pod and you see a bile titan which is a huge target if you hit them directly in the abdomen you will blow them up and this is true for almost any enemy in the game as long as you can hit them directly with the drop pod and that's all the 30 plus enemy types in helldivers 2 i hope you're having a fun time with the game and if you have other tips and tricks, drop those in the comments down below for other drivers, or feel free to drop your friend code for people that are looking for squads to start up. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.